Hi, everybody. Welcome and good evening. Uh, uh, welcome to Iberodoc's eighth edition, uh, Ibero-American Documentary Film Festival from Scotland. My name is uh, Mon Rivas. I'm one of the programmers uh, of the festival. And I'm delighted to be here uh, in this evening uh, with uh, some of the directors of the uh, uh, short film program, A Spiritual Journey, uh, which is part of our main program this, uh, in this edition. Uh, here with, with us, we have three directors, but also uh, a couple of special guests, uh, two people from uh, the Galician Film Forum in London, who are collaborating with us in the presentation of this screening. So uh, first of all, I would like to remind you all that this uh, event is being recorded. And uh, secondly, well, I give you pass to uh, Maria and Adriana from Galician Film Forum. Uh, hello, Maria and Adriana, how are you? Hello, Mon. Thank you very much for inviting us to this short program. We are very pleased to be here with all of you and with such a talented team you've got. Uh, uh, as I said, I'm Maria and here with Adriana. We are part of the Galician Film Forum. We are a London based organization committed to promote Galician cinema in the UK since 2015. Galician films are an essential part of our culture and they are a way of keeping our identity as alive, as you can judge by Eloy's short film Os Corpus. One of our main, uh, main goals is to make visible films from Galicia in the UK and to share this identity, not only with people from Galicia, but uh, also with international audiences in London. And now, thanks to the pandemic, <laughs> even to broader audiences uh, online. We strongly believe that we are a bridge between Galician culture and British culture, as you also do. <laughs> and we always want to build new bridges. And that's the main reason we are here. But Adriana is going to tell you a bit more about this. Adriana? Um, thanks, Maria, for the intro. Um, when Iberodox invited us to uh, be part of this event, we immediately said yes. Um, this selection of shorts explores the theme of what is not seen. As Mom puts it, a journey to enjoy an experience that goes beyond our physical reality. And this is as well the framing which the Galician Film Forum was born to explore and share our identity with others. Um, and also, as Maria just said, Iberodox is a festival that creates bridges. And at the Galician Film Forum, we also believe that cinema uh, is a, de a device that unites um, people. Um, thanks to our language, um, well, this brings us close to Portuguese and Brazilian audiences. And we've as well in the, in the past have included uh, Portuguese films in our programs. Uh, so we share common values with Iberodox. And so we have paired up with them to say hello to Iberodox audiences and to welcome you and invite you to future events. And uh, this is all from us. Thank you very much, uh, Adriana, Maria, for being here with us. We've been collaborating for some years now, so it's always a pleasure to have you uh, at home with us. Uh, now we will stay just with the directors, if you allow us. So see you very soon. Bye, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, uh, as I said at the beginning this uh, year, we have a very special uh, edition of, um, of the festival. Uh, the... Um, the, the, all the films will be screened online, so we won't have any physical uh, uh, cinema screenings, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, but at least we can all join uh, in these uh, events after the films and discuss a little bit about uh, what we've just seen. Um, so uh, this uh, short program of films, Spiritual Journey, uh, includes four uh, short films from the Lusophonous countries, as we said in the, in the brief of the program, uh, we have uh, Os Corpus uh, from Eloy Dominguez Seren uh, uh, from Galicia. Hello, Eloy. Hello. Hi. We have Os Mortos from Gonzalo Robalo. Hello, uh, Gonzalo from Portugal. Wow. We have uh, Misericordia from uh, Xavier Marrades. Hi, Xavi. Hi. 
which is actually uh, is a Chavis Catalan, but the, the film is uh, in uh, in Brazil, in 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 Misericordia, and we have also another film called Where It's Not Seen or Cannot Be, uh, from uh, Paula Abreu, we, uh, who is uh, not able to be here with us tonight, unfortunately. Uh, all well, the short film program uh, will be uh, available online for uh, 48 hours. Uh, from now uh, until Saturday the 24th at 6 p.m. And this screening uh, is uh, being supported by Acción Cultural Española uh, through the Pieces Grants Program and also the Instituto uh, Camões of Portugal. Um, we won't have any question from the audience today, uh, so this will be just an informal discussion with uh, you guys. Uh, hope you enjoy. So first of all, uh, just to start, I would like to, uh, uh, well, I think you all seen each other's films, uh, uh, but I would like to start with you, uh, Eloy, uh, talking about Os Corpos, uh, and I will, because it's the first uh, film from uh, the directors we have here. So first is uh, Paolo, but George is second. So since you are the first in, in, the, in the selection, uh, I would like to ask you if you could um, uh, contextualize a little bit uh, for the people uh, that just seen the film, what they, they saw in, in, the, in, the, in the screen, because it, it might be obvious for us uh, that we are both Galician and for some people who know this, but for some other people might be like, whoa, what the, is this uh, that we just seen? Can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, that, this is a, a very good question because uh, the film has already been in some festivals and uh, most of the audience don't know uh, where this is, what uh, are those crazy people doing, what's this about, why are they throwing stuff to each other, why are they jumping, celebrating. So uh, this is a traditional carnival that takes place in uh, several uh, small villages in Orense, in Galicia, in the northwest of Spain, uh, around February. Um, it's one of the oldest and I would say most uh, genuine carnivals in Europe. Uh, nobody really knows the roots of this carnival and how it has been developed uh, over the, I would say, centuries even. Uh, but they have kept uh, the wild spirit. It's really anarchic. It's uh, brutal somehow, uh, it's very physical, and this is the main thing for me, uh, considering that the film was shot only 10 days before the lockdown uh, here in, in Galicia. Uh, so uh, uh, you have seen or will see uh, thousands of people, strangers touching each other, uh, no t-shirts, sweating together, embracing, uh, dancing, jumping, uh, throwing mad to each other. And this happened only 10 days before uh, everything went to the shit. <laughs> so I was editing this footage uh, during the lockdown, during the, uh, the worst moment of the lockdown when nobody could uh, leave home. I don't know, in the case of my colleagues, I don't know. I know in Portugal it was uh, similar. I know in, in Brazil, I don't know if Chevy was there at the time, uh, it was a bit more um, soft in the beginning. But here I was editing these images uh, in, in the worst moment of the pandemic. And I, I couldn't believe what I was watching and what I had experienced few weeks before. So it was a mix between uh, nostalgia and also um, some kind of sorrow for when will be the next time that we strangers, uh, we will be able to embrace each other in this way. Yeah, I know. We all, I think we all miss those uh, days and, <laughs> and this kind of parties. Um, so making reference to Xavi, actually, I was uh, about to ask Gonzalo for a question, but like, let's jump onto Xavi because you just uh, asked him uh, I, how, I'm curious now how this community of Misericordia, uh, all these people that we, we see there, how I always uh, think about this when I see films that uh, these communities, that they live all so close to each other and the, the, the social part is so, so important for the community, how they might live 
a situation like this, no? like a global pandemic, obviously. But Xavi, can you tell us, um, because I know you travel to Misericordia alone and you stay there for a long time. Can you tell us how you felt, uh, how did you feel in, in, as part of that community, if you feel integrated or how was your experience living uh, there for, for some time? Well, first of all, my last trip to Brazil, or my, my last trip to anywhere before the pandemic was in Misericordia. I came back to Brazil and I, I came back and I was, I went straight to lockdown. So it was my last trip. And since then I've been like locked down in the countryside, just, you know, with few people and a lot of animals. Uh, so, um, well, my films are about places that I have strong connections with. And Brazil is a country that I have a deep connection and it came before I, I made this film, right? And uh, I got into, the, into this island because I got uh, an artist residency. So they invited me to this island. So I had some time to live in this place. And then I had time to, to dive in and to, you know, to, to, to see what, what was around. It's a small island, but has a lot of communities. And I just started going around with the car and my bicycle, and I just found them. And the connection was quite mm, immediate. And I felt that it was well received. And basically, but that was two months. It took me two months to, to get into that place. And then once I got there, the whole thing flowed uh, very, very easily. And it just was, it was very, very organic. And, uh, and I knew what I was going to do. I knew that I had this idea that I wanted to, to show a place through what the people of this place dream. And, uh, and, uh, and then I just knew what I was getting into and how, how would be my approach. Um, hmm. Uh, thank you, Xavi. Uh, it's uh, um, funny how uh, we will talk about this later also, but how uh, all your films connect in some different ways, no? that uh, we see this celebration of Carnival in both of your films, Eloy and Xavi. Uh, we see this uh, uh, connection with the spiritual world uh, in a way, uh, about uh, through the dreams of the people in Misericordia who talk about dreams, or in obviously the Carnival in Galicia, which is already like a kind of a dream, a mixing a pattern and Edinburgh, well. <laughs> and Edinburgh sadly <laughs> that's true <laughs> uh, now my question is for Gonzalo uh, I don't know in your film we, we can also see this uh, spiritual world uh, and the connection through the death uh, as the title obviously uh, suggests and uh, I wanted to ask you first have you been to any of these places like the other like have you been to north uh, the border uh, to Galicia or to I've Brazil? Been, I've been to Galicia but I, I never saw the the Etrusians how do you call them? The Etrudes? The, well, the dancers? The dancers, uh, Peliqueiros, no? Or the, the, how, how did you call it? The, uh, uh, you, you, you mean the, the drums? Uh, yeah, no, the uh, Folions. Folions. Yes. Folions. I never seen them. I seen it in the north of Portugal and they are pretty similar, although in Spain is, is always more, with more blood. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in Spain is more, uh, uh, there's more. Uh, aggression and sometimes you need it the portuguese are sometimes too quiet <laughs> but no and i have never been to brazil i i should have but never still still have gone there well hopefully you will have uh, uh, some opportunities soon uh, I, I wanted to ask you gonzalo now we are talking about uh, your film um obviously uh, the relationship with the death and the spiritual world is in also in first question in first person no? because we see yourself i don't want to just uh, uh, make a spoiler here but uh, uh, we see your your experience no uh, with the with with this with the death uh, exactly i i i make films kind of uh, making films is like my psychotherapy I should have, I should go to a psychotherapist for sure. <laughs> I just make these films and try to solve my things, expressing myself, writing, and then putting it into film or uh, pictures, whatever. And um, yeah, sometimes I, I complain with some of the dead, uh, with my grandparents or with my father or something like this. Sometimes I, I miss them. I, I, 
I just wrote like episodes that happened with these people and how the actual death came so soon in my life as, as the stories my grandmother told me. And particularly the story I, I tell in the beginning of the film that I will not say now because who's listening to this probably is going to see the film, I hope. And um, uh, talking about dreams and, and death and, and all this, uh, Xavi, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, did you start the film with a quote from Levis Strauss, uh, um, uh, anthropologist, and uh, I, just after that we have, uh, we, we see, well, we hear this woman talking about the dream that she had while she was on the boat. I don't know if the woman on the boat, but we, we, we are listening to this dreamy story. Uh, uh, is that what uh, Misericordia is uh, for you? A, a, a dream place or a place that is in between the real world and the, and the spiritual world? Well, I think my film is a dream of dreams. You know, it's also my dream of a place. And, you know, you, you cannot really capture a thing. It's always, you know, it depends on who you, who looks the place and how it shows a place. So I wouldn't say it is a special place for me, but maybe somebody else will go there and we'll see just something for tourists or something just beautiful. So I think it just depends on who, who's looking and who's projecting because in the way, in the end, you're projecting yourself and what you see. And, and it's also very delicate when you are a European and you go to certain countries, which like Brazil and especially Bahia, uh, have a history and strong with the, you know, the slavery and so it's a, there's a lot of layers in, in history and also a lot of wounds that uh, they're still there and, and it's problematic, right? So, um, and uh, for me a way to approach all these layers also in this culture and, and, and also from my, because I'm, some, I'm outsider, right? I cannot be a part of it. it it's, it, it's not possible. So, you know, I think it was a, a good way to try to approach through the dreams because I think dreams tell what is between the lines and then you can play with that in a way that's not so, so invasive. And I think it leaves more space to, to approach this intangible stuff sometimes. And uh, yeah. And the narrative also, it's very, it's very loose, right? I mean, for example, Gonzalo is a very good storyteller. And, uh, and in a way, it deals with this intangible stuff, but also uh, it's a strong narrative. And you really know, you follow it very, my film is much more visual. You have to let yourself go. It's like a journey. Sometimes even my film doesn't it even work. You can just watch the stuff and, and keep going, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense. Yeah, now that you mentioned Gonzalo's approach to the film, I, I would like to ask you if that was always in your mind to when you had this idea of the film that you would use the still photos and the voiceover narration uh, to the film? Uh, no, usually, usually I, I always see images before uh, making films. This time was different because I had an experience. I went to the hospital. I thought I was going to die. And I remembered people that died around me and I thought I was going to meet them somehow. Um, so I just went home and for two weeks I wrote a text. And then for four months I corrected the text. And then I remembered I had, in the middle I remembered I had pictures of all these people and animals. And um, and first I wanted to chase the nicer pictures, the beautiful pictures of them. But then I try to understand what is a ghost. If a ghost just appeared in front of me in the corridor, almost without light, what would be the characteristic? And I just found out that the, the eyes would have to be unfocused. So I started to look for pictures with unfocused high eyes. So that's how I, I came to gather these pictures. It's not always possible. There are some eyes that are in focus, mm -hmm. but that's how I, I looked for them. So the pictures are not good. It's the life that sews mm -hmm. the, the pictures together, I think, yeah, I hope. Yeah, totally. And um, I think that's one of the characteristics of, of, your, of all, all your films, no? that we, we can actually go into uh, that, that uh, part that we cannot see 
on the first in instance. No? Um, and that uh, is the, 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 the main theme of this program of films. Um, but uh, uh, going back to the physicality of the actual uh, shooting process, I would like to ask you, uh, Eloy, uh, how was this? Uh, because obviously in, in the film, we see like many kind of risky scenarios <laughs> uh, around the, and uh, you can actually feel part of that. But also uh, I was wondering how was the shooting? Because um, probably it might not have not been easy to, to shoot in the middle of this craziness, right? Mm. Uh, first of all, I would like to say something about Gonzalo's, Gonzalo's film. Uh, yes. I felt it very close, and then we often talk about the, the strong ties between Galician and Portuguese culture, uh, and um, also in the approach that he does to, to death. Uh, I think that the, in Galicia we have a very, very strong culture with, um, with death, um, even in the landscape, all the myths and stories, and all, but also our uh, um, writers. So, uh, when I was listening uh, to this beautiful Portuguese in his film, I was thinking about some Galician authors like uh, Angel Folle, for example, who talks a lot about the death, the myths, uh, wolves, um, landscape, but also this, this sinister uh, atmosphere around us. So I wanted to say, Gonzalo, that I enjoyed it a lot because I felt it uh, very, very close to, to our, this, this intimacy of death that we have also in, in Galicia. Then um, in answer to your question, Mon, I mean, uh, um, the shooting was absolutely crazy. It was insane. Uh, it was thousands of people uh, at least drunk uh, <laughs> in uh, absolute ecstasy all the time. Uh, it was very risky for the camera also because uh, one of the traditions there is to throw ashes and uh, and flour uh, flour not um, the flour the one that you use for making bread sorry for about my pronunciation uh, and they throw mat to each other literally shit to each other so in order to protect the camera i was shooting all the time behind a plastic with a little hole for the lenses so my only contact with their outside world was this little hole so I, I was basically listening to these thousands of people screaming and all these drums uh, and I couldn't really see around me I, I could only see it through the lenses it was very intense in, the, in that sense I, I, people were hitting me and I had uh, the producer of the film Belly Martinez who was basically my bodyguard for, for three days but uh, we understood that the only way to, to capture the nerve and the energy of this place was to be part of it so we said in Galician Se queremos ser acarallada, tenemos que ser parte de acarallada. If we <laughs> <laughs> if we want to to feel the craziness, we have to be part of the the craziness, right? Um, carallada is a much more beautiful word. <laughs> though. It is. So we we knew that we had to be very very close to the faces, to the bodies, to the muscles, to the sweat, uh, and in that sense, even though it was physically a bit risky. Uh, I think that we captured that, that, that energy. It was the only way to be part of the chaos somehow. That's great, uh, Eloy. Thanks for explaining this. I hope uh, people will have the opportunity to go uh, sometime to uh, south of Ourense and, and Laza or other the villages to experience this uh, craziness. Uh, we are running out of time. Uh, I would like to ask you if you have any other uh, comments uh, or anything that you would like to add or say about each other films or in general uh, before we finish this event? I can start because I, I met Javi in, in Mexico almost two years ago and um, when I saw his film because I didn't see it in Mexico I saw it now and it I spent, I don't know, a few days around Javi and other directors and it felt his. It felt like the way he looks with his calm eyes, just throwing his uh, um, curiosity, his, his calm curiosity towards the world. So it was very, 
I felt very connected to it. And I must admire uh, Eloy's film because I wish I, I could be in the middle of this, this uh, fighting. It's, you always get beautiful images. And I felt like it was, I felt like I was there. Even the, the, the ending images when people are going home and still reproducing some of the, the acts and some people putting something in front of her. Sorry, I don't want to spoil your film. But no, yeah, I mean, go ahead, go ahead, don't worry. It felt, it felt like I, I was through one of these things and it was marvelous. And thank you for your films. And, and Paulo Abreu's film also. I, I know Paulo, I, I met him once. And, uh, and I think he's a, a very beautiful, very Portuguese, by the way. Maybe in Galicia, you can understand that kind of conversation between pals when shooting, when the camera is off, when the, when the sound is not supposed to go through the, to the um, post-production. And I think it's um, uh, a very beautiful film to, to, to dedicate to a friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with what you said. Uh, I felt very close to the humor in Paolo's film. Uh, I think also um, we have this type of humor in Galicia that we call retranca. It's uh, based on irony. And uh, so I was laughing a lot. It's a very beautiful and uh, very sensitive film. Uh, in the end, it's a portrait of uh, friendship, extremely beautiful. But I was laughing a lot, even though uh, the end is uh, it's a, another feeling, it's a very deep feeling, but I was laughing a lot and I felt also very close to this, this type of humor. Um, finally, I really enjoyed this program. I think they're amazing films. And I hope that after this pandemic ends, we can actually watch them like in a big screen. I mean, the laptop is okay, but I mean, they deserve, and I hope that I saw Gonzalo's one in a big screen and it was amazing. And I wish I could see yours because I think uh, yours, Eloy, also it's uh, the whole experience, the sound, is a, it, it's amazing the way that they cleared it. And I think it, it puts you even more inside of, of, of what's happening, right? And I think, and I hope that we'll get to out again and, and watch movies where they're supposed to be languages in the big screen after after this. Yeah, I really hope uh, that's uh, happening really, really soon. Uh, all of your films deserve like a really big screen. Uh, they are all beautiful and I was delighted to see them all and, and to have them all in this uh, program. So I would like to thank you guys for, for letting us uh, show your films, for uh, making uh, this uh, happen, uh, making this uh, uh, short film program possible with all your beautiful films, for taking us to this journey, uh, to the spiritual world, to the dreams, to the uh, uh, what is not seen at the first instant. And uh, just to remind you all, uh, the films will be available online for 24 hours still. And you can catch this uh, discussion on our social media, uh, uh, Iberodox in Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and also uh, in our uh, website, iberodox.org. So uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you, guys, and see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.